Hello, uh, we are in London launching the Impact Report for Jen 2016 and also celebrating our fourth birthday. Birthday, Jen. Um, so I'm Laurence, I've been a member of Jane for a bit more than a year and I'm on the executive team at the moment. And with me are Pilar, the founder of Jen, who's been here for a while. Four years, exactly. Yes. Yeah, I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> Chiara and Elena from Hi, Chain yeah. Italia. Yeah. And Charlotte from Chain London. <laughs> Not London. Uh, so uh, the, description, the link to the impact report is in the description of that video. So have a look after the live. Um, in 2016, across all Chain chapters, we have had 164. 4,000 views. Um, we've reached 42,000 people in 15 countries. So, good job, Jane. Um, so, my first question is for Hira um, What would be your top tip for other organizations uh, who are looking to invest in a grassroots um, way, uh, but on a global scale, like Chain does? Great question, thank you. Um, so I think I, I get asked this question quite a lot of time, I'm sure you have heard, so I'm sorry if you've heard this answer before. <laughs> but um, I think the most useful thing that I did when I started Chen was to research what was already out there, who was doing what, if there was a gap in, in what women could find. Um, of course, if you're working on an issue which isn't to do with women, if you climb or anything else, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is that you see what's already out there, so you don't reinvent the wheel. Um, you try to connect with other organizations that are on the ground, uh, when I started Chen, I did try to do that. I didn't get a, in a lot of um, I get a lot of support from some sectors, um, but I did get a lot of support from social uh, entrepreneurship, for example, for the tech startup sector. Even though they didn't have anything to do with women's rights, uh, but they were you know they were cheerleaders. So that was very helpful. So doing your research, seeing what's already out there, um, and then being agile in the way you grow the project so you have enough flexibility to respond um, if someone says this isn't working or if you, you all do this testing. I think the, the tendency to have something perfect out there is can be quite damaging when you're starting something very small and you have global ambitions. And I think the last thing I would say is the one thing that I'm really happy um, that Jen does uh, is that we don't create chapters because we think they're needed. We create them if people from that community want it to be there. And I think sure and I can tell the story better than I can. But I always wanted there to be a Chen Dalia chapter. But I'm not Italian and I didn't think it was appropriate for me to start one. I did put in like the words here and there, <laughs> kept mentioning it to Italian friends. Um, and then when I met Elena and uh, she said, Well, I'm interested. Um, I tried really hard not to be too excited about it. <laughs> she's gonna sense the desperation. So, <laughs> know that. <laughs> so I told her that she must have at least uh, three other people uh, with her to start yes. it. Yeah, and then she was like, "Oh, three is nothing. I've got ten already." So you know, that, that's I think that's a really good thing that we did at the start, and we still do. Uh, and Liz, how has Chain collaborated with other organizations this year? So that's probably for you and uh, Nina, because Jenny Kali has done quite a few collaborations this year, I've heard. And what's been the impact of the collaborations? Well, I think it's a, a good question because if you, when you guys read our impact report, you'll see in 2015, one of our big takeaways was that we need to do more collaborations. Um, and we found it difficult because we're volunteer-led, so it means, you know, well, volunteers come and go, uh, sometimes you lose the thread of conversation, and we just we don't not all of us can meet during daytime with other NGOs. It's just like there's so many logistical problems, and there's also conceptual problems. Uh, a lot of people don't understand what we do, and it is the bane of our life at the moment. <laughs> so, but it, it meant that we had to try extra hard and, and reach. You know, rather than waiting for other people to come to us, that we have to go to them. So in 2016, the, I think the most, the, we, you can read all about the different partnerships that we did, but my favorite one is the one we did with um, Raj Shekhar, who might be watching this. He's in India. He's a fantastic uh, ad executive and like runs this amazing ad agency that he started from himself. And he approached us uh, and Avani, who ran uh, Love Doctor, 
uh, that she's now sold, uh, which was a counseling site for men and women uh, about love and sex and relationships. And um, she said, I want to, I want to counseling support on Snapchat. Um, we were, we thought it was a great idea. We were slightly apprehensive because at that time, all the, the news sites were flooded with the fact that it was used for bullying, for sexting, and then like, you know, revenge porn. So it was, we were very cautious, but he won us over and we're so glad that we did it because it became a defining moment for us last year. Uh, we reached out to so many teenagers. There were stories uploaded every month, uh, and, sorry, every day, uh, and up to a thousand people were viewing it every day. And so it was for India, uh, and Jen, India worked on it, but it grew to have support in multiple languages. Now we have two partners in different parts of the world who are offering the same service. At least 2,000 uh, teenagers who offered, like, you know, who engaged with us one to one. It just, it was like taking counseling to where young people were comfortable. So I think that was a great um, project that we did and uh, I'm very happy about this. And, and Avani uh, and Raj, if you're watching and Nidha, if you're watching, you know, great work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think Trinitaria was born with the idea of collaborating already inside a lot. Because we really wanted to make sure that all the content we were generating was really, really uh, even though it was always to be improved, but also really tested and we should have been helping women with uh, information, building information gaps that were uh, reliable. So we really needed to, to make sure that what we said um, was also uh, developed in collaboration with women's services. And we, uh, especially as one uh, in Roma, on the Samson of Topic City, really, really uh, made a lot of effort and energy and passion in um, developing uh, a lot of the resources that we have uh, currently on our uh, website, which is uh, chinitaya.org. And um, so definitely, I think the biggest collaboration of 2016 has been with the uh, women's, um, women's centers, uh, more of them actually, but yeah, this one was the main, the main one. Um, and then since we are a chapter of a global uh, movement or a global organization, uh, we've been approached by um, a radio, Radio Bullets, that one of us was really interested in us uh, reporting stories from the Indian chapter, the Pakistani chapter, or just in general from Chain in the World, because the headquarters, uh, the Chain HQ, is actually volunteers are from all over the world. How many countries are there? The 15, 15 countries. So, like, literally everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, we had the collaboration, it was really interesting to, you know, just really brief, uh, um, yeah, radio stories. So, it was quite exciting. And also, another interesting collaboration has been with Passionaria, which is a feminist news uh, platform, uh, which is a very, uh, very good approach, a very intersectional feminist approach. Uh, and I previously launched a campaign online on uh, really popularizing what, like, what violence is, like tiny things, like policing your gender expression. Is that violence? Telling me I'm a slut because I wear short things. That's violence. There was a previous campaign they did. And then when we launched the Italian version of the uh, privacy guide, you know, how to be safe online, um, we really wanted to develop a collaboration online as a campaign to say, okay, this can be a digital violence. So we launched a collaboration in that and was, yeah, it was quite interesting to see people contributing with their personal experiences. And actually Italy is one of the, the top uh, sort of countries where we get traffic for, for that guide. Uh, even though it was launched way after the global launch, so there's a real need. Definitely, I think we there's some some a lot of work still to be done, but we're doing our part for now. <laughs> yeah. So to all of you uh, that seem to what you have said, but what's your proudest moment in chain in 2016? What's is there anything to chain achieved this year that makes you feel extremely proud? I mean, I can continue from yeah. that, <laughs> saying that, well, we launched in March 2016, so I think that's definitely the proudest moment, and that's been a very, very great, just five months, uh, we were like, as Harry was saying, a few of us at the beginning, and it literally was so many people working on the text, on the content, on the media, on the social media, on the graphics, on the diffusion, it was just a gigantic work. And we're all really proud of that. Um, yeah, so just in 2016, we reached like 43,000 page views on the website, that is chinitalia.org, and 8,000 users. So that's just the 2016 alone. Um, so obviously, this year is improving, and we put more collaboration, more views. Uh, 
but yeah, definitely the proudest moment was celebrating this big achievement together. On the ground, we also had like, uh, you know, a launch event in Rome at the International Women's House, Casa uh, Internazionale delle Donne, which is a, yeah, a lot of these beautiful people were there with, that, were there with us. Uh, but yeah, that's my proudest moment. Yeah, I think for me the same. I mean, we worked so hard on the launch just to, you know, prepare everything, as Anna was saying, and then like seeing actually the website going live, it's really great. And I think we had like loads of press coverage for the launch. I think we organized as, like, you know, a media engagement strategy, so we kind of like put our part of work into that. But just like we were on the major Italian newspapers and we got interviewed and I really didn't expect that. And it kind of showed to me like the fact that in Italy there was really a gap mm -hmm. for what shame provides, which is in a feminist perspective. Chiara <laughs> was telling us about her proudest moment in shape in 2016. Yeah, so I was saying that as Elena said, I mean the launch was the proudest moment and the fact that we got like so much media coverage. We were on the main Italian, major Italian newspapers as well as uh, kind of like more online related magazines like Wired. And I think we did put quite a lot of effort in our media strategy, but I certainly wasn't expecting that level of coverage. And I think it gave me sort of the, you know, the confirmation like of how much shame is needed in a context like Italy, where there's very, there's a lot of misunderstanding on what violence against women is. There's a lot of misunderstanding on what the causes are, uh, and having like really simple, accessible feminist information out there. So if you need it, if your friend need it, it's there. It's accessible. Uh, there are links to other useful resources. I mean, yeah, it just, yeah, I was really proud that we got out there. Uh, Charlotte, so you've been a volunteer with Che for yeah. two years? Coming up to two years. Yeah. Coming up to two years. So, uh, what did you learn as a chain volunteer this year? Um, my proudest moment was probably the uh, collaboration with Tech Fugees and Empower Hack. Um, working with Tech Fugees and creating uh, tech for women and girl refugees. Um, we saw a real unmet need in both the, the scope that tech has there, but also in the desire of the tech world here to do something about it, do something practical. And it was uh, really amazing to see people come together and give their time. And then Barang is still working on yeah. They've become their own community and it's, it's cool to get updates from them and, and hopefully bringing forward Soul Medicine, which was one of the Teasers. <laughs> coming soon. Yeah, she's coming <laughs> teasers for a project. <laughs> Smooth. Uh, on the less fun side, um, have there been any challenging moments uh, in Chen this year? By this year, 2016? That's, yeah, for you. I'm not sure if it's 2016, <laughs> but I think that's a recurring, you know, challenges of working in a, a volunteer organization, which is, you know, uh, the motivation needed to keep going, to make sure that, you know, uh, is compatible with your work, private life, that, you know, because it's an it's a organization where you, you put so much love and energy and constant by yourself to remember, you know, that you need to see you need to know what you're doing, <laughs> balance out your life and make sure, you know, that it's, it's yeah, fair for everybody, but also that there's enough participation or something. Managing the volunteer cycle that personally has been one of the main challenges. Yeah, that's uh, I would agree. But I think a partner that someone has already spoken about that. Um, for me, what was very uh, frustrating uh, was the fact that uh, Chen Pakistan, you know, obviously the original mm -hmm. Chen project, Pakistan is my home country, <laughs> yeah. uh, really like it was dead in 2016. Like there was, uh, we get got volunteers and they would leave, and there was just no continuity. 
and I found that really frustrating because I was spending so much time working on Chinatalia. I was just like, it's not even fun. <laughs> I was like, where? And then in India for staff counselors, it just, I didn't have any time for Chen Pakistan and I didn't have any time to get volunteers motivated and I just, I, I felt personally really bad about it. And the other thing was Supernova, uh, which I thought, uh, which uh, we actually have Michelle, who <laughs> is the awesome project lead. So there's a lot of new things coming soon. Again, another coming Teaser. soon. Teaser! <laughs> Teaser alert! <laughs> but, yeah. but we were so short with the launch of last year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, yeah. yeah. it was gonna be the Netflix that Pride. That yeah! <laughs> translating our resources to uh, fit uh, free range of installation teams. So obviously it's really needed and it's going to be really cool and live soon. Yeah, and then we've right. got some really interesting activists and people who are from the queer community who are working on it and creating new content and sharing your story, which is amazing. We've, uh, since we've Gen launched, we've had questions about this, you know, why isn't there, uh, why isn't it more intersectional, why don't we have, and we, that was a need that we felt like we had in our organization. We just didn't have a lot of idea. But well, in the Italian website we created. Uh, yeah, and that's where it started actually. Yeah, we created yeah. a section, a whole section on violence and lesbian relationships. Obviously, that is just a part of the picture, yeah. but I think that was a very big input to. And yeah. it's also from another collaboration that started on the ground in Italy. Uh, you know, a feminist collective and queer collective created that. So that was quite. Um, and that inspired Supernova um, because we that the, the work that Jen Dalla did was so successful, and uh, um, and we have a signal from our crowd that we need to be louders. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell us that. We can <laughs> the two hundred people out. in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the the great response that Jen Dalla got, we mm -hmm. were very enthused by that, and then we can use that as a basis to start Supernova and to start recruiting from scratch, from people who actually identified and, and were part of those communities. Um, so, and, and Charlotte and, sorry, Charlotte and Jones are very active in that. <laughs> and we might have a Facebook Live about that soon when the project launches. Which yeah, be teasers, yeah. more teasers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Chiara, um, what inspired you to join for work in the Chamber of this year? Uh, any particular? Event. Yeah, I think this year, like in Italy, has been really, really interesting because we've seen the feminist movement come together and just like really kick ass. Like I was seeing in, I don't know, the past like 15 years, 15 years at least. And yeah, and also being like really, really radical, really intersectional, looking at the needs of migrant women in Italy, looking at, you know, what happens to queer women in Italy. So I think it was really inspiring. And then on the 26th of November, there's been a huge demonstration in Rome where they brought together 250,000 people about this, you know, the state of violence against women in Italy, which is horrendous. And um, but there so, it's called Non Una Di Meno, which is yeah. a global movement called Non Una Menos, not one less woman, yeah. basically. Yeah. So inspired from, you know, our sisters in Argentina and then yeah. Poland, then the Italian movement really, really came alive this year and it was really incredible to see and it's still going. So some of us, uh, but well, I have to say I'm not based in Italy, so unfortunately I wasn't there in person, but some Italian volunteers in chain were really, really active in that and the movement has some, um, you know, working groups that are developing a feminist, a grassroots feminist plan to end violence against women in Italy. So some of us have been really involved in that. And Chain Italia has been supporting that through a campaign that we run online in support of Centro Anti Violenza, which are like from blind women's aid centers in Italy, where you know the emergency is huge. Two women at least are killed every week by a partner or ex-partner. But the government is shutting down this center. They live on a shoestring, there's no money, sometimes only they get like to be able to rent some premises for free, they are evicted. So we ran um, this online campaign called Cambiamo il Finale, which means let's change the end of the story, to make 
basically to raise awareness of the role of the centers and the fact that they're saving millions lives and why we all need to care about that. So being in the midst of all of this was really, really inspiring for a while. Um, um, and you know what? Uh, jumping back to being a volunteer, uh, is there anything you would like to say to someone who's considering becoming a volunteer today, joining us? <laughs> joining us a bit. Madness and fun. <laughs> this is a sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> a, a sales pitch into a potential future volunteer. As, as you said, it is madness. Sometimes you get wrapped up, but it's a really good madness. Good. You're surrounded by really strong, supportive women that no matter what you're going through are going to be there. I insisted on still being part of Chen um, during. <laughs> Uh, my chancation, because <laughs> I couldn't live without the updates that I uh, get from all of these women around the world. And um, it really does feel, with the impact report, with the numbers that we're seeing, that we're actually reaching and making a difference, which is really rewarding. So, join Chan. That was a good pitch. Yeah, was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Join. Um, and Hero, what's the next question? Well, I think this is a good question we can all answer. Yeah. What's coming up? Uh, 2017 <laughs> has already been amazing. We launched uh, the Do It Yourself Online Safety Guide. We have been working on Soul Medicine, uh, which again it was a project that went in the back burner at the end of the year, and it, it will be launching this year. Um, we also have a really amazing uh, group of volunteers working on improving the section on divorce and law in India, which is the most requested uh, sort of section. We just launched uh, last week to help people who, who friends and family are experiencing domestic abuse, really telling you how you can be supportive. Um, and that's something that we were asked a lot. And uh, we have, we're working on translating more of our resources. So the online safety guide is available in eight languages. And the How to Build Your Own Domestic Violence Case with a Lawyer will be available in, in, in four languages at the end of this year. And uh, we have a lot more, in, we've done a lot more work internally on upskilling our volunteers. So we have two projects, uh, sorry, we have two courses uh, online at the moment. If you go to chen.teachable.com, also A M M A L, AML, which is one of our projects, .teachable.com, there are two courses, one about being a project lead and uh, one which is about uh, design and how to do design logo and how to improve your design uh, skills, which are very useful. So we're trying to do more and share more of our learnings with everyone else uh, because you know, no organization, especially one that's all about improving the, you know, the, the way we support women will be complete. We act in silos. So we have to improve the way we work with each other and we have to make sure that, you know, we, these problems are huge. They cannot be they cannot be dealt with one organization. We have to hold hands and we have to help each other. Yeah, so I just want to say something on the good friends guide because it really shows like how we are working together globally. So this guide was initially developed by this group of feminists in Rome who have been running a grassroots women's aid center for many years. So it was on their website. And then because some of them became volunteers in Chinitalia, then it was on Chinitalia's website, which had a broader reach. And then it got translated and adapted into English. So for me, it's just because when I read it, I, was, I found myself in the situation. I was like, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do here. And it was really harrowing. And then when I read that guy, they helped me. So I know he helped me. So I was able to it's available in English and perhaps in other languages in the future. I think another thing we're working on for 2017, which is kind of across Italia and the chapters, we're putting together a guide on how you might start your own chain chapter, just hinting out there. Um, <laughs> so trying to get yeah, so trying to get some like top tips from these two and others have been having involved. Um, and uh, of course, it's not going to cover everything because I don't think that's possible. But hopefully it will be an inspiration for somebody who might be there thinking maybe I should do this or that should do in my family. So that's something coming up. Yeah, you can talk more about change. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I think the translation aspect is definitely important for us because we have you know, our sources in Italian, but we really want to also outreach to our micro communities in Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're looking forward to translating some of the content that is applicable to Italy by different languages. Um, we are, as Chiara was mentioning earlier about the media, 
uh, we had a few interventions in conferences and festivals and just uh, campaigns about how the Italian media talks about uh, gender-based violence. And we are now developing some training courses uh, with the National Union, hopefully with the National Union of Journalists, we don't know that yet, but um, to train um, journalists on how to talk about violence, right? And how not to, you know, like, uh, sexualize the victim, how not to shame the victim, how to, you know, like, a few uh, aspects there. And then crazy falsehood about what the causes are. And yeah, like, you know, uh, raptures of craziness. Yeah. Sick love. Yeah, <laughs> sick love, yeah. For example, that's one. Uh, something else is coming up. We really would like to uh, work more to fill the information gap about the mapping of the services available on the territory. Uh, we had started that project, which meant mapping every single women's service um, in Italy with every single service they have, when, why, how. And obviously, that endeavor was <laughs> enormous. So, we're trying to see what collaborations we can put together to make that a real, you know, a real deal. Um, definitely that's another thing. Um, what else? I mean, there are other bits and bobs for sure, but I think these are the big mm -hmm. priorities that we're taking forward. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you want next? I think they're largely been covered. I mean, it's like super nervous coming, yeah. more translations are coming. Uh, good friend guide is out and uh, spreading. We have many people. I mean, yeah, yeah this is people. So guide. very weird title for people to say it properly. <laughs> but it's basically about helping uh, you know how to deal with people who have uh, who are manipulative. Yeah, identifying uh, a manipulative person and how to deal with them in that situation. But also with nothing. <laughs> it's like a context. <laughs> <laughs> We're also revamping all the uh, psychological violence section to make it yeah less compartmentalized mm -hmm. and more yeah we revamping that section on the website. We would like to simplify also the legal part. It's a big challenge because that's so yeah. difficult, but we will get there. Yeah, we'll that's there. definitely yeah, that's all, all chapters and all sort of the work that we do. It's uh, it's so important. Um, any other thing else? No more teasing? No. You're done with the teasers? <laughs> I'm trying to think. 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 i am i it's called the beautiful graphics yes. made from <laughs> Some of that? Well, well the, the, actually, the title graphic is made by uh, by volunteers who work in Genitalia, uh, but other graphics are a mixture of me and, and other, other volunteers. But, yeah, have a look at that. that. Yeah. And, and thank you to the guys. guys. Thank you also to all the people who helped prepare this session, yes. which you know and are. Two that we know are <laughs> Dina. <laughs> Woo! And I want to know the other names. Do the pronunciation. Olivia worked on this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, worked on this. And for the person who was sitting behind you. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm still watching. And exactly. Yeah. Doing that on your Saturday evening, <laughs> afternoon. Thank you very much. <laughs> awesome. Bye. 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 <laughs> you can't